my firstborn daughter, my shining star, daddy's girl, was taken from me. She had this infectious laugh that now I only get to watch on TikTok videos. She was supposed to get married and I was gonna have my father daughter dance without our daughter Alyssa our lives have been changed forever Ilan Al Hadef el padre de Alisa una de las 17 víctimas del tiroteo en la escuela secundaria Parkland en 2018 estalla de ira y dolor al relatar frente a un jurado lo angustiosos que han sido estos últimos cuatro años para él y sus familiares I longed for the day that I would get to speak at this hearing. I wanted to tell this jury what happened to my family and this community. I wanted to tell you what happened to my Alyssa. On February 14, 2018, my 14-year-old daughter was right where she was supposed to be, in her high school English class. Four years later, She's supposed to have been in her second year of college. Soon she'd go on to be a professional soccer player. She'd get her law degree and maybe become one of the most successful business negotiation lawyers the world would see. She was supposed to get married and I was gonna have my father daughter dance. She would have had a beautiful family, four kids, live in a gorgeous house, a beach house on the side. All those plans came to an end with Alyssa's murder. Alyssa's murder impacted so many people in so many ways. After Alyssa's death, my father was never the same. He passed away a year later. My lovely mother, she lost her granddaughter and struggles to find happiness in her life. <laughs> then there's my father-in-law, who always said Alyssa could do no wrong. They had a very special bond, one that you love to see between grandparents and grandchildren. But this was broken only by Alyssa's murder. Alyssa was the captain of her soccer team and the center of all her friends. She lifted them up. She helped them study. She was the shoulder to cry on, and she was the ear to listen. No matter what her friends needed, she was there for them. Most of all, she had this infectious laugh that now I only get to watch on TikTok videos. Then there are Alyssa's brothers, one was too young to comprehend, but asked to go to the cemetery to see his sister from time to time. This is not normal. For the older one, I feel like Alyssa was his best friend. He looked up to her in so many ways. The night of the tragedy, he stayed up the whole night, calling me every hour, asking me if we had found her yet. And I didn't have the heart to tell him on the phone that his sister was murdered. So I had to wait till we got home and had to share this tragic news to him. It broke my heart having to say this to him. About a year or so later, he asked if he could switch rooms so he could be closer to her. He holds back his sadness and anger with losing his sister, but recently at the grave site, he gave a speech and just came to tears. This is not normal for young boys growing up. They should not know of such sorrow, such loss and tragedy. My wife, the mother of our children, lost her firstborn daughter. She gives talks about how it was like someone ripping out her heart and stabbing it. She fights every single day to keep Alyssa's name alive. She occasionally sprays Alyssa's perfume just to try and smell her. She even sleeps with Alyssa's blankets. 
then there was me, my firstborn daughter, my shining star, daddy's girl, was taken from me. I get to watch my friends, my neighbors, colleagues spending time enjoying their daughters, enjoying all the normal milestones, taking in the joys, and I can only watch videos or go to the cemetery to see my daughter. It was four years ago to everyone, but to me it was yesterday. Melissa will always be 14, and I will always be at the point in life with her. All I know is a piece of my heart was not just cut out, but it was ripped out of my damn chest. Inside, I burned like a damn inferno. It took me so long to be able to feel empathy again, and this prevented me from doing what I'm good at, which is caring for patients. Unfortunately, I have to live my life with anger now and make it fuel my existence. While the world gets to move on with their lives, we don't have that luxury. Missing our daughter every single day. No parent is supposed to have this grief. Without our daughter Alyssa, the lives have been changed forever. El padre de Alisa dio su desgarrador testimonio durante el juicio contra Nicolás Cruz, quien en 2018 abrió fuego en la escuela secundaria Marjorie Stoneman Douglas en Parkland, asesinando a 17 personas. Nicolás Cruz se declaró culpable de los asesinatos y será el jurado quien decidirá si lo condena a cadena perpetua o a pena de muerte. Soy Carla Álvarez y esto es Notibomba.